in many ways, it was a very, very difficult life. You had a lot of unhappiness. No, harder than most people, really? I should imagine. Everybody has um, hard times and good times in, I think, a kind of balance. They, I've had some very marvelous times, and therefore, I, I have to have the other one, too, yeah. equally. I just don't want it all in the middle. I would hate to just travel in middle gear for the rest of my life. You mentioned in the book, and to me, that's a very sad thing, that, that you can't remember your sister, Olivia de Havilland, having done anything warm or kind to you. In, in my childhood. Yeah. I say definitely in my childhood. And uh, I don't think a child does. A child remembers mm -hmm. the uh, whatever, whatever it remembers. It may not be absolutely accurate, but I actually do not remember any act of kindness. That is true. Breaking your collarbone was certainly... Yeah, that was an accident. I'm sure it wasn't entirely intentional. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always thought really all, that was all publicity, the feuding sisters. That they're, that that wasn't true, that couldn't... Uh, well, we are naturally... Um, my mother also. Our family are all eccentric, I have to admit. My father was like, eccentric. My mother was a very definite and positive person. And my sister and I are very definite, positive people. Mm -hmm. So you put that together, then you are bound to have differences of opinion. You just have to. We are not passive people in any way. When was the last time that, that you spoke to your sister? I did not speak to her at my mother's memorial, and so it was the previous telephone call when she wanted my mother operated upon at 88. And I had uh, mother prepared mother for death for months on the phone by talking to her, and she didn't want to live. And uh, my sister wanted her to be uh, opened up and explored, and I uh, couldn't take that one. And I said, it's uh, entirely up to my mother, our mother. But uh, no way am I going to sanction this. You weren't even notified of her death. Olivia sent me a telegram, but it, I had, was on tour, so it got uh, mailed to me two weeks later at my next stop. She didn't bother to find out where I could be reached or to telephone me. Your mother had an incredible influence on your life, and you regard, regard her very highly and in some ways after reading the book i don't understand why miss fontaine in what don't you understand it sounds like if she was a a hard woman in many ways the fact that she wouldn't she wouldn't go and see any of your films she wasn't very generous to you no, in some just a way. Minute. i know you read the book but you haven't read it accurately then i say she never told me mm -hmm. she saw any of my films i don't say she didn't go and didn't brag to everybody but she did not discuss them with me, which may have been very clever, because to discuss anything would be criticism. What she said to somebody coming out of, I can't recall now which movie, that she thought that you were much more... Uh, Real on the screen. ...than you were in person. She said that to my husband, Brian Ahern, at uh, the premiere of Rebecca. Well, that's a perfectly valid remark. What's wrong with that? I don't find her hard in that respect at all. I find her... It was not a warm, cozy kind of family. She's not a warm and... That's right. None of us are warm and cozy. It's not in our natures. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, a lot of upside, ups and downs. You were saying that for all the success and the adulation and the money, you have not had a real romantic experience. You were not able to sustain a relationship because you didn't want to give up what you called independence. Mm -hmm. that, that, isn't that a, something that you're missing? I don't want... You mean to give up my independence? No, I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, but it's either or. Yeah. And uh, my independence matters far more to me than any long relationship with any single person. As a matter of fact, I, I am a single. I'm a solitaire by yeah. nature.